Right, everybody, thanks for looking in. Nigel's modeling bench here. Um, I've got an inbox review for you today. Well, it's actually one inbox review of two kits, really. I've got this one, the FA18F Super Hornet from Trumpeter, and I've also got the FA18E Super Hornet from Trumpeter. As far as I can see, the only difference in the two kits, sprue wise, is obviously this one's got the um, different canopy and it's got a different insert piece here on the spine and obviously it's got a different cockpit um, as far as accuracy goes i do not have a clue if you know or you can link me to somewhere that says something about this kit's accuracy please let me know i'd be very interested um so yeah the, the basically the two kits are identical other than those parts the f18e i have made a very small start on um i basically bought the kit when it initially came out i started to build it and then realized it needed aftermarket the cockpit's um very simple on it and also what i realized is the way they, they haven't put any side walls in the cockpit so you could actually look through the canopy and see inside the lurks panels there's great gaps in the side so that, that there's no way of building it like that so that was um that was the first thing i picked up on i thought no, i'll put it away when something comes out then i'll get something and i bought the eddard big Ed set for it when it came out as far as I'm aware, Eddard never made a big headset for the 18F or the G. Um, but anyway, this was um, this was available at a show. I bought it cheap. Um, the actual E I bought from Wonderland Models for like 40 odd quid or something. I think it was. So um, yeah. So without further ado, we'll get into these boxes. We'll have a look around the outside of the boxes in a minute. I've got the camera literally perched on top of my um, lamp because I cannot get the camera far enough away to get the whole box in. So in order to show you around the around the boxes, I've had to do this. So we'll look around this F18F box first, um, and then we'll look. I'll have to break away, and then we'll have to look at the um, E after that. Right. So looking around the box now, this is on the F version, and we can see we've got one option here, which is a VFA2 Bounty Hunters. Um, and that's looking pretty nice with the skull on the uh, on the fin and everything. And it's also telling us what weapons we get in the box. So we get um, six AMD 141s, six GBU 12, six GBU 22s, one ANA Q25, and two LGTR 2s. So um, there's a big box of weapons in this box. I can tell you that. Uh, and then we got some information about the kit here. And then we've got here, we've got the, um, these are the decal sheets you get. There's three decal sheets, a small fret of uh, PE. Um, looks like we may have some belts there, I'm not sure. Um, and then there we go, it was made in 2010. So, and it's also says somewhere here, it was not for children under three, which uh, I found quite a surprise. I thought a two year old would be able to build this really easily. Never mind. Um, so there we go. Uh, here's two other options here. This is uh, Jolly Rogers. And then we've got this one here, which is the Diamondbacks. Um, looking very pretty with its uh, red back and the diamonds on there. Um, we've also got more weapons here. So we've got some AGM 84A for, uh, for two. We've got some AGM 84E slams for two. AGM 84H slammers for two. AGM 154s for two. F for four, sorry. AIM 120s for four and aim nines for two so you can see we've got plenty plenty weapons in there um and the kit number is zero three two zero five and it's available for around about a hundred pounds on ebay so let's have a look at the fa 18e this is the um the single seater version as, as i'm sure you know um one thing i am struck with with this very unlike trumpeter on the front it would normally give you a length wingspan and a number of parts but it doesn't tell you that anywhere on the box so i'll have to find that out and um, come back with that so looking around the box on this one we've got the tomcatters i won't go through the weapons again because they're probably all the same so we've got the tomcatters here um which is vfa 31 and uh yeah we all know about the tomcatters scheme and then moving here we've got some information about the uh, aircraft itself then we've got again we've got three decal sheets uh, a PE set and this one was actually 2009 this one came out which is 10 years ago now um, doing this because the Revell kits just come out and um, apparently it's got some issues uh, so here we've got the um, puking dogs this is um, 
USS Dwight Eisenhower. And then we've got the uh, Royal Maces here from um, USS Kitty Hawk. And yes, the weapons are all the same by the look of it. So, and then we've got here our kit number, which is 03204. So what I'm going to do is an inbox sprue review for you. Um, but what I don't want to do is open any of the bags from the F kit. Uh, as we all know, when we buy kits second hand, we like them to be sealed. And I probably will never build both of these. So if I'm going to sell one, then I'll either transfer the sprues that I haven't opened into this one and sell this one, or I'll build the I'll, I'll sell the F and build this one. Um, as I say, this one is started. So any sprues in here that I've taken parts from, I will take from the other kit to show you, but I won't take them out of the bags. And I also don't want to open the decals on the other one. I know you guys understand if you're modelers, um, you, you know, you don't go opening kits that you know you're not going to use. So, um, I'm not going to make, should I say. So I'll get some, get into these boxes, get some sprues out and we'll go from there. And here's what we find when we open the box. Um, once again, it's a demonstration of Trumpeters um, and Hobby Boss, both the same. Amazing packaging. I mean, if you look at these fuselage upper and lower halves, they're in their own little plastic wallets with a plastic lid. You know, you're not going to damage them. Um, that's how they come in the box like that. And then there's a cardboard spacer underneath to keep them off the uh, the bottom of the box. And it also keeps them flush with the top so they can't float around. There's some cardboard boxes at the end. They're just empty boxes, I believe. I believe they're empty. Um, and then there's this box here. You've got all the sprues in here. Again, you've got sprues which are smaller than these. So they've put a spacer in there to stop them all knocking around. And then you've got those sprues there and then you've got this box here and this is a whole box complete box and that is just as you can see on there that is literally just weapons so I kind of personally think what they should have done with this kit is given you the option of not having the weapons um, and perhaps making it a bit cheaper because you know there's there's a good few quids worth in there that's I mean, if I open the, well, I'll open the box in a minute and review, but you'll, you'll see that's like a kit in itself in there. Um, so yeah, there we go. So that's that's the F18F. As I say, the ETE is started. So let me get all these sprues sorted out so I can make up one kit, and then we'll go from there. Here we can see the difference in the sprues. You can see that if I um, if I put this up like that, you can look across the top, and you can see that the actual fuselage sections are the same. The cockpit seat is the same, it's just that with the F you get two of them. We can see the canopy is different between S and T, but the front of the canopy is the same. All these parts here are the same, all across here, all the same. And then we come down to E, F, U and H, they're all the same. Weapons are all the same here. Okay, two lots of photo etch with the F, only one lot with the E, so I assume there are seat belts on there. Then we get L, M, N and K across the bottom. And then with this kit, we get J with the E and you get K with the F. So obviously K is the twin cockpit. And I'll show you that sprue now. You can see here, there's the twin cockpit. And as I said earlier, I'm not gonna be getting any of the F parts out of the bag, but you can see it's, um, it's not bad. Um, but like I said earlier, it's all a bit soft and needs aftermarket i think for such a big cockpit especially if you're going to shove the canopy open um there's the the rear panel there again it's all a bit sort of simple and soft um but i mean it's a, it's a 10 year old kit now so you'd almost kind of expect that really so there we go got the sills there I'm not sure if they're the sills or the bottom of the canopy they're probably the bottom of the canopy aren't they so there you go so that's that sprue taken care of that's for the F version and then with the I'll show you the um, the J sprue in a minute which has obviously got the the single canopy and then the uh, the cover over the rear so basically that's that's the difference that's that's what we've got so what I'll do is I'll go through the F instructions for you um, so you can just ignore in fact what I'll do 
I'll look at both instructions when, it, when we're doing the cockpit because that's where the difference is. So we've got the E cockpit here and we can see we've got the seat going together, going into the tub, um, joystick going in. Apparently the joystick is incorrect. I actually have a quick boost correction for it. Um, so that's that one. And then with the F, obviously it's going to be pretty much the same. It's just doubled up. So you can see here, doubling up there with the the front to back cockpit with the the seats are exactly the same it's just a different tub okay so going on here we, we're building up the uh, the nose wheel assembly it's showing us there we have to put it in now I'm not sure we do but we'll soon see when we come to build it and then we've got the radar assembly here for the nose going into the nose sections unbelievably the nose section parts are the same even though one's a two-seater and one's a single. And then we're building up the engines. Full engine detail right the way through. That's a Phil Flory saying, I said right the way through, sorry. Um, and everything else like that. And then we've got the uh, undercarriage legs here going on with the wheels and everything. We've got vinyl tyres. Then we've got detail here going in for the undercarriage bays, which is all looking very crisp. Full length um, intake ducts there. So there's going to be a seam to get rid of in there and then we're putting our engines in and then they come out all the way to the back so you've got full length and then we're assembling the wings attaching the wing fold not sure where the option comes in to have the wings up or not and then we've got different options here we can have our flaps down or have our flaps up and then more wing assembly here again we can have our flaps up or down according to expanding and folding so if you're having it folded you, you have them down I guess um, I think they mean extended and then you've got the the wingtip here with the, uh, the missiles there and then we've got the option here to fit our wingtips in the uh, extended or, or, or folded positions and then we're putting the cock cockpit in there and adding the lurks panel there underneath Sorry if I go off camera there guys. Looks panel there. And then we're doing our tailplanes by the look of it. We've got separate rudders. Sorry, not tailplanes, fins. And then uh, adding the nose, you can have the nose in the folded open or in the closed position. So that's cool. So I'm going to give you a hinge so you can play with it because then it would be all wonky, wouldn't it? It wouldn't fit very nice. Um, so we've got that there. Then we're adding the uh, the right wing and the left wing. And then putting the top of the fuselage down onto the bottom, there's going to be some seams there to take care of. And then we've got single piece tailplanes by the look of it, or um, what are they called? Flapperons? No. I can't remember now, they've got a special name. If it's a one piece tailplane, it's called a something or other. You're, I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments. Um, and then we're adding our undercarriage here, the main undercarriage. Putting in our undercarriage doors, there's some small PE parts going in there. Um, we're pretty much there now. And then more undercarriage door parts going on there. Blimey, there's a lot of it. And then we've got our, uh, our ladder, pilot's ladder. Um, air refueling, re refueling probe. I didn't see us actually fitting this door for the opening of the um, avionics panels. And then fitting the canopy and then we're on to weapons so if we look at the F it'll all be the same until we get to here we go fitting the cockpit in with our um, looks panel underneath and then we've got this blanking panel going in the back here rather than the larger panel we had there and then again fitting all that in together not sure what that's for us, I guess that's some kind of alignment, it's giving it some strength. Um, adding on the nozzles there. And then we're doing all the same with undercarriage doors, air refueling probe. Or in flight refueling probe, should I say. And there we've got the canopy with the separate seals and everything and the actuator on the back. And we can have it in the closed position, we can have it in the 
in the race position there with our ladder out and everything and then into our weapons and as we can see our weapons are the same so we've got all our different weapons going on here I'm not going to pretend to know what the names of them are because I don't and then more weapon assembly there so you guys can see there and then we've got our here we go that's our weapons loadout that we can have I'm assuming they'll be the same they certainly look the same to me whether they should be or not and trumpeter have got it wrong I don't know but they they certainly look the same to me so there we go this is for the this is the F version there's the weapons call out there you can pause that and have a good look if you want to the other thing I wanted to show you that to pause and you can have a look at unused parts for the F version so you can look at that and then take that and look through back through the instructions if you want to and unused parts for the E version differ slightly here so there you go so that's looking through the instructions now let's have a look at some plastic I want to start off by looking at the um, upper and lower fuselage and the clear parts these are for the F uh, because I actually built the undercarriage legs on the E already so um, we'll get these out of here you can see they're very tight fitting and protects the parts beautifully and keeps them from damage. It's a shame that the likes of um, Airfix, Revell, HK models can't take a message from these guys and uh, perhaps start doing, even Meng actually, and even start doing the same. I mean these kits are practically impossible to damage in transit and yet the uh, I've heard of a couple of HK models Lancasters now suffering damage um, in transit. So here's the upper fuselage and we've got the uh, there's some nice panel detail on there you can see it's not overly done I don't think and it will pick up a wash beautifully um, something on there which isn't very pleasant <laughs> it's like a piece of droid biscuit or something um, we've got these panels on the back here I do remember seeing that the Revell ones are massive in, in comparison to what they should be and we've got these vents here I'm assuming they're vents or well, they might be chaff dispensers I don't know um, there we go yeah we've got vents there which are not moulded over and on the inside here nothing much in there to uh, to write home about but then you wouldn't expect that would you and then we've got some vinyl tyres here which have got a, a seam on them so that'll be fun 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 all the way <clears throat> and we've got our metal landing gear inserts which is a nice touch on a on a 30 second scale aircraft then moving on to the lower part of the fuselage again we've got this really well fitting plastic box that I can't get apart there again. all of a sudden it just falls apart isn't that funny so that comes off like that we've got the lower fuselage here with that lovely landing gear bay internal detail there it's very nice with the ribs and the rivets all the all done I don't know how accurate it is I hope there's some bulkhead detail to add in there because it's a shame because of the molding restrictions obviously they can't have any detail on the end faces I, mean, I guess it would be easy, easy, easy to add some again we've got those vents underneath those diamond vents so there we go and um, nothing much on the inside as we'd expect nice panel and rivet detail there and we've got our clear parts this is our F canopy it's got a bit of a rub mark on it there and it's also got a seam in the middle so um but again nice rivet detail around the outside and let's just do the writing test as we can see it's got some distortion but nothing too much and then we've got the front of the canopy on the other kit I'll show you on the other one because I'll open it on the other one we've got a seam line on there as well which is uh, which is only to be inspected if we want this shape so obviously they can't mold that shape in a two-piece mold it would never come apart or they, it's impossible so you have to have a split top and one piece in and as it pops out it just flexes the plastic as it pops out and then we've got some clear landing lights here which are bloody gorgeous they'll be good to um if we get any spare they'd be good to replace the headlights on my uh, ICM ambulance wouldn't they 
and then we've got some photo etched down in here which is basically the seat belts oops flicker of the light sorry guys that's just basically seat belts so there's two sets in this one because it's the f version so yeah the cockpit is fairly simple that's one of the uh one of the downfalls of this kit right we'll do the bag sprues first because i know i don't like doing bag sprues i'm sorry guys but i, I don't want to open either it's a it's a hundred odd pound kit and i probably will be selling what well, i probably will be selling one of them um <clears throat> So these are sprues L and H, um, and these are identical in both the E and the F version. And you can see here we've got some drop tight mouldings, and then when we turn it over, we've got on his side we've got our undercarriage, nose gear bay, and um, some other bits and pieces there. We've got our wheels. So let's have a close look at all of this stuff. We've got our wheels there, which are um, pretty nice. Could be a bit sharper, but you know they're they're there. Undercarriage legs here, and as I showed you earlier, you've got the steel inserts that, or the metal inserts that go in them to make them fairly strong. Um, I've actually built these up and they look quite nice. Um, then you've got some panels here, different panels for different stuff, little actuators and stuff for undercarriage here. Nose gear bay, which has got some detail in it, and you can see you've got detail on the end panels as well. And then we've got the um, the side, the sides of the nose gear bay there. So that's all very nice. And then turning over, got our nose to nose here. Hope the shape of that's okay. That's normally what's out on jet models these days. Instrument panel. This is that's for the this is the F kit, so I'm assuming that instrument panel is gonna be for the E. Um, because the F kit I think had its own cockpit, didn't it? Its own cockpit sprue. So um get a spare instrument panel there. So there we go, that's the uh, radar you can see there, the radar assembly. So yeah, all very um, all very nice. Got a control stick there, a joystick, which apparently is incorrect. So, there we go, that's those parts. And then here we've got the engine assemblies. I did start building up the engine halves just because I wanted to do something while the aftermarket got itself together and um, yeah, so I started building the engines up. So evidently these are out of the, um, well, not evidently, obviously these are out of the F model. So you can see we've got some nice detail on there, fan detail, bits and pieces of the um, reheat. Yeah, so never going to be seen unless you open it up. You'll see the insides obviously. Note there's no ejector pin marks in there to speak of. There's a square mark of some sort in there, but nothing much. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, all looking, uh, all looking lovely. Now we'll move on to the sprues that I can open. Right, so here we have sprue A. I'll go through the sprues in no particular order. I'll just make sure I get them all done. So um, we've got our front fuselage halves here, intakes here underneath the wings, and then we've got our intakes here that go inside the for the uh, air to go into the engines. Go inside these is what I should have said. You know they're for the air to go into the engines, don't you? Notice on here we've got openable um, panels for the avionics. So let's have a close up look at this. So there we go. Some simple detail, but you know, it's some detail that's in there. And the same on the other side. Nice panel and, de and um, hinge detail on the side of there. Not much riveting detail, but what's there is, uh, is nice and will take a wash and look great weathered. Got some mesh detail there, which is very nice. Well, I haven't looked at yet. I'm, I'm dreading. I'm turning, dreading turning over these and finding massive ejector pin marks inside the intakes. So there we've got the intakes there, or the intake cover, should I say? So that's the basic size of the fuselage there under the wing. The same on that side, and then we've got insides of the intakes with ejector pin marks. But they are very, very. They're almost flush with a ring around them, so. They're going to take nothing to get rid of. So what well on trumpeter? Bear in mind this is 10 years old. Yeah. And if you look at some of the rubbish that's being produced today with ejector pins all over it, you'd think these other companies would alert by now, wouldn't you? And when you bear in mind as well, trumpeter turn out how many kits a year? You know, it's crazy. And yet they, they listen to the modeler and they don't mess up. Ran over. So this is sprue U. This is obviously some of our control surfaces. 
Um, I'm not going to pretend to know for a minute where any of them are, but there's obviously flaps, and ailerons, or flapperons, or whatever there is in there. You can see on the back side of them, there's ejector pin marks, but uh, not knowing where they go, I'm not sure if they're going to matter at all. But um, if these are sandwich assemblies, these ejector pin marks are all sub flush, so they're going to be no problem at all. Um, bit of an issue there. Looks like that's bulged up. But it's not shrunk on that so okay that there is it looks like it's pushed through but it's not it's um it's in the mold so nothing much to speak about those really here we've got our uh, main wing parts cool now when people tell you i've heard people say that mold release is a thing of the past and no one ever uses it here's the proof guys okay there's your proof, it's on there, and I'm wiping it off with my finger. That is oil. So when people tell you there's no such thing, you tell them you show them this video. If that is not if that isn't oil, then I don't know what is, okay? I know people, I'm not gonna mention any names, but I know people say that nobody ever uses mold release in this day and age. Well, there you go, they do. So that's obviously the main wing sections and there's some nice rivet detail on there. Whether it's accurate or not, I don't know. If their um, Eurofighter was anything to go by then, it could not be. It may not be. But there's some panel detail on there as well. And all looking lovely. And then we've got the Lurks panel at the front here. And then this, I'm guessing, these are our wing tips here. So um, on there we've got some nice mesh detail, which will take a wash lovely. And then we've got our wing tips here, again with riveting and panelling, which is all crisp. And as I say, I'm not sure if it's accurate, but it's crisp. And then we've got the, um, the raised areas there that go over the hinges. And on the back side, a little bit of clean up required to get them together, but nothing too much. And then we've got what looks like our fins. Here, part loose there in the bag. So we've got our fins and rudders by the look of it. And these are our um, elevators and tailplanes together. Flapperon, I can't know what they're called. Flapperons, I don't know. <laughs> um, so there we've got our fins, which again have got some nice rivet detail on them. Nice and crisp, nice and crispy moulded. No hint of flash or anything. Nice moulding there, you can see on that vent. As I say, accuracy, I haven't got a clue. But I'm sure you guys will tell me. And then we've got our bits on the back, we'll call them, shall we? The bits on the back that make it go up and down. Yeah, because <laughs> I can't remember what they're called. And uh, yeah, they're very, very simple. Um, minimal detail on them, but they were probably uh, had no detail on them anyway. They may have even been composite, I guess. So there we go, that's them there. Then we're on to we've got two of these sprues. This is sprue M. And this has got some drop tanks. You actually get three full drop tanks with this kit. And then we've got some uh, big pylons there. Um, looks like some mountings there for them. So yeah, they're all nice. Bit of detail on the pylons. Not overly done, no rivet detail on them. But um, yeah, some detail, some detail on these pylons here. I'm not sure if they would have had rivet detail or not. But they do look a bit, perhaps a bit plain. Uh, this is sprue F. And this one's got some more pylons. Looks like some gear bay doors here. Panels for covering the avionics panels by the look of it. More gear bay doors and they've gone into this ram system here um, hinges flap hinges and covers all the way there and then there's our in-flight refueling probe there not sure how accurate that is but uh, it's there nonetheless and then this is our last bag of plastic sprues now this is the these are the sprues that I've used parts stuff so I can show you these are the interior of some um, gear doors 
more interiors there. I notice there's no ejector pin marks in them, which is nice. And that's the uh, inside of the gun bay door by the look of it. Um, and then we've got the side walls of the undercarriage bays. Remember, this is the first sprue I showed you, I think. And then we've got our little actuators and stuff there. And then this sprue here is the, um, the instrument panel for the E version and our radar and everything there. So, rest of hook here. So there we go. That's the, um, is that the extension probe for the refueling probe, I think it is. And we've got our um, cockpit sprues here. This is the cockpit seat as it comes, slide molded in the kit. You obviously get two of these in the F, one in the E. So you can see there it's got detail on the sides, front, top and the other side. And then we've got our, this is the back of the seat here, top of the seat. And I'm guessing this is our pulls for the ejection mechanism. And then this is the single cockpit tub. Obviously you don't get this part in the F. And then we've got our canopy rails there, which look very nice. That's the part that goes over the nose. And then this is the infill panel that goes behind. And the, um, this here is where the, uh, the canopy hinges up. And apparently this is the part that Ravel have got wrong. The shape of this is too square, I think. And looking at that, and then looking at the Ravel kit, I think it could well be. Um, well, if somebody said it is, it probably is. I'm not, just, I'm not arguing with them or debating it. But um, what I'm saying is looking at this and then looking at the shape of the Ravel one that I remember seeing in some shots, it looks like the Ravel one is much squarer than that. So there we go. All very nice. So let's go on and have a look at the um, the decals now and the colour callouts. So this is the, obviously the F version, version A. This one's got the um, the overall grey scheme as they all have, um, and it's the callouts. The colour callouts are in uh, aqueous and Mr. Colour from the uh, Mr. Hobby range. So that's pretty cool, easy to cross, -re cross reference, um, or just gen use their paints. Uh, so you can see here, this is the um, Bounty Hunters version, which is um, very, very good looking. Got the black around the uh, canopy there on the top. Um, and basically the only colour really is some flashes on the tail and down the side. So nothing uh, nothing too bright on that one. Nice if you like a low-vis aircraft. Then we've got this one here. This is Jolly Rogers. So um, looking very nice with the black tail and the yellow, yellow, um, yellow trimmings there and the, the stars down the side. Reminds me of a F-14. And then we've got this one here, which is my favourite. It's the most colourful, the Diamondbacks. And um, you'll see here red on the back. You get all this in decals. You paint the red and then you put the diamonds on, I believe. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And it's got that big uh, Viper on the side there. So, yeah, looking lovely. And then we've got all the weapons here with all the decal calls out, decal call outs and everything for them. And again, we've got all our colour call outs there, all in um, Mr. Colour and Mr. Hobby Accuous. Looking at the decals, guys. Sorry, as I said, I don't want to get any of these out because one of these kits is going to get sold. I keep saying that. Um, and we can see here we've got the, the great big uh, Viper heads on there. And then we've got some stencil data, decals for our instrument panels and um, various bits and pieces. Then we've got the, um, this is the Bounty Hunters, isn't it? This is the Bounty Hunters one. And we've got our uh, stars and bars there and our tail flashes and everything. I'm not sure how accurate these are. I know that um, Trumpeter do sometimes get things backwards when they start swapping side to side. So, um, yeah, so not sure how good they are. I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments if they're any good or not. And then we've got the main decals here, which I which you can see we've got the stars and everything that go down the spine, which are very difficult to show up because of the, the white on the white paper. But we've got the stars and everything that go down the, down, down the spine. And then when we go over here, we've got our um, scheme here for the um, for the Jolly Rogers, with the yellow flashes and everything, and the low vis. We're starting to get towards low vis stars and bars there. So um, yeah, and then we got all our weapons decals there, which is very nice. There we go. This is the um, color callouts now, the page you marking guide for the E version, and um, this is for the Tomcatters, the the one there calling A. Again in the overall grey scheme um, and I can't see any colour call out here. 
Yes, there are. It's done in um, guns again. So, um, overall grey scheme with the, uh, the black tail, with the uh, Mickey Mouse and the bomb there. Uh, Tom Catcher's on the side of the drop tanks. And um, the signal on the inside of the... Um, on the inside of the tail there so yeah all um all very pretty very much with what we've seen before and then we've got the um this is the puking dogs puking dogs should i say and the royal maces so um <clears throat> again we've got this one with the black the black spine and this one's just all gray with the blue flash on the fin and then we've got our weapons call out and decal call outs there and all our colors going across the bottom we got Mr. Hobby, Viejo, Model Master, Tamiya and Humbrel on there. So there we go. So you can uh, I'll bring you in on that one. You can have a closer look and then you can pause and have a closer look as you see fit. There you go. So that's that. And then, sorry again, guys, I don't want to open the decals. Um, but we can see we've got our Mickey Mouse with our bombs there. We've got our coloured flashes and everything. Stars and bars. More stencil decals, decals, and uh, lots more down there. And then all our weapons decals there. Probably the same as well. It's going to be the same as the um, the F. And then this one here is our decals. It's just one sheet for the Royal Maces. And we've got our tail flashes and everything there. And then more Royal Maces stuff there. All the yellow. It's all very nice. The puking dogs there. Which is all cool. You know, I'm sorry for not opening them, but um, as I say, I want to sell one of these kits, and you know yourself, you wouldn't want to buy a kit with the bags open. I'll have a look in this box now, which is it's like a kit in itself. You get a whole box of weapons. Now, I'm not going to open any of these bags because there's no point. We've all seen trumpeter weapons before, and the one I will. have a look in this one and we can see that we've got some missiles here now I'm not going to pretend to know what any of these are if they're sams or sparrows or what they are but you can see there you can see the detail and they're all very nice indeed I just really want to show you here that you get a lot and then we've got some um, cruise missiles there by the look of it there's some more of those other ones just some missiles there sams or sparrows whatever they are you can see those get some more light on here for you then we've got our um bloody bloody blouse whatever they're called you can see that it's a nice detail on them i think trumpeter weapons have some shape issues i'm not sure the, is that the Fleur forward looking infrared? Um, then we've got some pylons there, some mirrors and tours. And then we've got some more missiles here with extended wings. They're very nice. And then some more missiles or pylons, I'm not sure. I think they're actually missiles. You can really load this thing out. And... Uh, more missiles here, which are very crisply molded with some nice clean detail on them. And then these are GBUs, aren't they? So they're uh, big and chunky. I think there's a problem with the shape on them, isn't there? And then there's some more missiles there. And then some more GBUs. So a lot, a lot of weapons in there. <clears throat> 